Yes, I took a class. Um, I was a chemistry major for three years. I wanted to do uh, physician assistant science and medicine, and the professor was a medievalist, and so um, I just I fell in love with it. I really liked medieval medicine because it combined both art and science. I've always been personally interested in how um, the ancient world became the medieval world, like the sort of transition, you know, the, the fall of Rome and the rise of this new thing, this Christian Europe. My favorite origin story for my medieval studies uh, career is the movie A Knight's Tale. Um, just a big, I'm a big fan of 70s music, uh, and having that go along with the knights and everything was uh, a lot of fun. Had the opportunity uh, as a child to travel to Spain a lot. Um, and to see medieval buildings and medieval art like firsthand, um, so I uh, appreciated it in that way. I took a, a class on the Crusades at Fordham, and it showed me the different things that you can do with this field and with this field of study and all the different possibilities. Um, so it just kind of took off from there. So the uh, grad classes at Fordham are fantastic. The faculty are very present. Um, the, the, there is a mixture of MA and PhD students in almost all of their graduate classes, and it doesn't feel like the MA students are in any way second class to the PhD students, which is great. We all meet. Um, we've usually read something beforehand and then we all get together to discuss it. Sometimes someone will give a presentation and ask questions, but we talk about anything, like dissecting a primary source or talking about an author's perspective on something. Um, it's very discussion-based. We all get to talk to each other, ask each other questions, things like that. The classes were really wide. Uh, I took a class on manuscript culture, which was really, I think, an exceptional, uh, exceptional part of this program. Um, we got to go to the museums in New York to look at some medieval artifacts and books up close, and I think that that really encouraged students to um, get real hands-on access with um, some of the more interesting aspects of medieval manuscript culture. Faculty are absolutely incredible. They are so helpful. They are willing to go the extra mile for you to look over a paper or point you in the um, direction of another source. They're also just really helpful with networking and helping you do some professional development, like I'll have professors reach out to me and say, oh, this paper would be great, you know, at a conference or something, or you should really send it to this person, or you should be interested in looking or working with this person. Um, they're just really there to help you, um, yeah, in every way. The faculty are all uh, really amazing. Um, they're all, like, experts in their fields. Um, I've definitely been, a, I think I said before, I'm a, more of a, I came in a bit more interested in, like, the ancient world, but uh, I've definitely been dragged forward in time because they're so passionate and enthusiastic about their periods. Um, it's really been amazing to learn from people who, who know so much about their uh, fields that they've devoted their lives to. I think the faculty are uh, the most supportive members of our community. No matter when I've approached someone to talk about something that I'm interested in, they always open their doors and um, have this wealth of knowledge that they're willing to share with us no matter the time of day or by email. Um, I think single-handedly, if I had to pick something that was the best part of this program, it's the faculty mentorship that we've been able to get as students. Very friendly, very knowledgeable, um, very respected in their field, and make excellent uh, recommendation letter writers. Um, I've, I've just been very lucky to have some like real powerhouses writing my rec letters for um, PhD programs. Um, I'm excited to be moving on to a PhD program in the fall, and it really would not have been possible without the support of the faculty. Everyone just wants you to succeed. They're trying to do their best to make sure that you're getting where you need to go, um, and that you're, you know, doing the best you can to pursue your career goals. The community at Fordham Medieval Studies has been the best thing. I've met so many amazing people and made some great friendships, professional relationships. Everyone is like so helpful and collaborative, like they can get you a book if you need something or they'll look over a paper. So like just the sense of community and sense of belonging here is really what drew me and kept me in. The community here is one of the most supportive academic environments that I've ever experienced. I think um, there is no better place than being around, you know, 70 medievalists when you've come from a program where you're the only person. Um, being able to come to a community where there are 70 people who are all interested in the same things um, is exceptional. There are so many medievalists. They're all in sort of different home departments. Uh, some are in history, some are in English, theology, philosophy, and then of course the MAs and the undergraduates that take the classes within the Center for Medieval Studies itself. Um, it's an academic community in the sense that there are 
events and lectures outside of class that we all go to and see each other. I mean, the community is really everything, I feel like, in medieval studies. Uh, I mean, I don't think without the community that I've been able to get through it. Um, we're there to support each other and to understand each other. And oftentimes we're in the same classes. So, uh, you know, we literally know what's going on in each other's lives in that respect and uh, are able to build each other up. And I think the important thing is, you know, not seeing it so much as a competition the way I feel like other programs might, but um, actually supporting each other and recognizing, you know, we're all kind of studying different things and, and doing different work, um, but doing it all together. And I think um, having the people there to be a, a network of support is, is really vital. I'm actually involved with the Digital Humanities Project, um, have been for two years now which is, I think, one of the best ways that you can make medieval studies relevant for the modern period, you know, um, help get it out to the public, get to a wider range of people to find out about um, this time period, the sources, what exists. So the project that I'm working on is Medieval Londoners. So we collect data on people that lived in London um, from a certain period, and then we structure the information from primary sources into a machine-readable format, um, and then it's uploaded into a public searchable database. So. It's accessible for the public, anyone can look through it, anyone can download the data, use it for their own research, things like that. Um, so it's a pretty small team, we're not really funded, it's all volunteer, we just... So you kind of get the sense to like, you get the chance to lead in these kind of projects as well, to come up with your own things and be involved in coming up with the policies and the way that we do things. I'm really interested in um, digital pedagogy, so using digital tools for teaching, uh, more so than in my own research. This past fall, with uh, a faculty member, Dr. Marianne Koleski, um, allowed me to develop the final assignment for her undergraduate class on Medieval London, which was a digital mapping project. And I learned a lot about how to use technology in the classroom um, to my students' advantage for students to have success. I, I think a lot of times people disconnect medieval and technology because it's like, I, you know, I have my manuscript, <laughs> you know, why do I need that? Um, but it, it provides so much more information than what you might receive, you know, with the naked eye. Um, and you get to do, all, I mean, different, all sorts of different analysis and get an entirely different viewpoints. And I think that the projects that we've done here have allowed us to really get a new grasp, especially on French of Italy and French of Outremer doing um, the work on uh, the Latin East. Um, and so, um, you know, we just, we've been able to get entirely new perspectives based on the work that we've done and especially the, the graduate students who um, typically run the projects. I can say I was someone who came to this program not really interested in combining digital humanities with medieval history. Um, I think that I was a quick convert because um, in, in combination with the other professors and students, I was able to be uh, um, an editor on the Medieval Londoners um, website and I'd say that I am now a convert and someone who's interested more in digital humanities than I was previously. New York is uh, great. I mean, um, the, the Met is right there. That's uh, every time you learn about something you can go and see examples of it. You know, the real artifacts are right there. And, uh, you know, I've lived in New York for a while actually, even before I joined the program and it's the it's the only place I really want to be. It's the uh, it's the best city in the world, <laughs> which a lot of people say, but it's it's true. <laughs> it's always good to be in New York City. I think um, as a medievalist in New York City, you know, you have the benefits of going to museums to see things in person and um, especially manuscripts. You can contact any of the libraries to look in person. Professionally, I think that you have the ability to connect with a lot of different schools and other medievalists outside of the Fordham community um, that allows you to talk to a wider source base. And I also think that you have more employment options on the side here than you would have elsewhere. Medieval community-wise, I also participate pretty actively in the Medieval Club of New York, and I go to a lot of events at the CUNY Grad Center, and there's just this whole confluence of medievalists at all the various New York schools, so it's great for networking and meeting medievalists outside of specifically Fordham, too. You have so many resources here. Uh, you know, I my master's thesis was based on a book of hours that was in the Morgan. Um, you know, I, I think for an American city, we have access to so many different repositories and, and manuscripts that it's just like a really, like literally a valuable place to, to find those manuscripts. I'm trying to keep my options open, see what where it takes me. Um, I'd like to do a PhD eventually. I'm in this field probably working on 
women's and gender studies in later medieval England. Basically my entire career trajectory is based off of the work that I've done in medieval studies. Um, so my long-term career goal is to essentially be a digital humanities coordinator, some kind of center. Um, and at this point, I, like I said, I, I went from my medieval studies master's to uh, library school where I got a DH certificate. And I would, I had never even really touched, I had touched computers in sort of a broad sense, but I hadn't really worked with computers until I was in the medieval studies program. Um, and so uh, doing, doing that work and being able to take that into library school and now uh, for the history PhD program, I am essentially trying to work towards that DH career. And um, as trying to do a digital dissertation, still kind of figuring out what that looks like and what that means. Um, but being able to do that DH work um, in the program and, and getting, again, the support from the faculty um, to, uh, you know, be able to pursue that part of my career that's outside of the traditional, you know, tenure professor goal that many of us have, but trying instead to kind of veer more towards that digital humanities angle. Fordham is such a great university because people really um, care about you and care about your growth, whether or not that's going to be uh, in a traditional medieval studies field or um, you know your own pursuits. I think that that's something that I really love about this. Um, and I've always been able to come back to my Fordham family whenever I've needed support.